Hello, Saltines. Again, we're doing a Zoom episode, so welcome back. Um, I was making turkey tetrazzini from the Turkey Day leftovers and did not want to leave a hot stove unattended. You know, much like a lot of people leave candles unattended with lots and lots of herbs and oils on them. Um, me, I'm that person. Anyway, obviously we have Mike and Mia. Um, a little bit of a rundown of what we're going to be doing today. So we are going to, I'm going to get on the floor. I'm going to get on the floor. There we go. I just shrunk. Yay. We love it. Um, so we're going to start with a grounding. I'm going to lead us all through grounding. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, triggers, like on a magical level, how you can actually like create a trigger to activate a ground. Oh, Thank you for clarifying, because yes, because these, you know these these days trigger has a very different connotation for many people. Yes, a trigger a, a trigger charm, if you will, um, where um, we will be evoking our inner Bene Gesserit. Our inner Bene Gesserit, we'll be evoking that, um, and then Mia is going to be sharing with us some Sag and Cap stuff um, to look out for. And Mike has a glyph, and then we're going to talk about trickster gods. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get ready. What we're going to do first and foremost, um, this is something that Mike actually taught me, and we're going to put a combination on it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your fingers, and you're going to do this, okay? But you're going to interlock them, okay? So kind of like this, and then you're going to create a basket, okay? And you're going to bring that down to your belly. Okay. Can you show it on screen? Yes. Is it like this? It looks like I did this. Oh, that? Yeah. Okay. Mia was being full Bene Gesserit. Mia, so. Mia's got it. Yes. This? Yes, that well, is correct. You can, you can more clearly see Mia's, Mia's pants. Yes. yes. Okay. So, so with that, you are then going to place the tip of your tongue behind the top teeth. Okay. And you're going to close your eyes and you're going to breathe in. You're going to just breathe in and out. And we're just going to bring our attention to our breath. What we're doing is we're creating an energetic circuit. In the midst of creating this energetic circuit with our breath, we are also psychologically telling our bodies that whenever we do this particular mudra or hand motion or position, that we are going to be able to enter into a light trance state, into a light state of heightened and altered awareness. So as you breathe in, feel that belly expand and out. Keeping that tongue to the top of the mouth. You might start to notice that you're getting warm. This is because you are now creating a circuit of energy throughout your entire body. As you breathe in, breathe out any excess guck that you have. At this point, if you're a particularly visual person, then as you breathe in, you're going to let that belly expand. And as you exhale, you want that excess energy to just kind of drop off into the ground. While you're doing this, pay close attention to how your hands are interlocked. And 
Now in doing this, while you're creating and circling that energy and letting go of what your energetic field does not need, we're cleansing and purifying our aura as well. So as our energy is cycling, we're getting rid of the, the, the muck of the holidays, the stress of Black Friday, And when you feel that vibration, your body will almost kind of feel like it's doing a when you're when you have that, bring your hands to prayer position at the heart. And then focus completely on what's between the hands. You can let them kind of drift apart. And as you breathe in. And let those arms go up. Those hands go above your head. The palms turn outwards. We push down to our sides. We scoop up. Create the mudra again. And push down. With an exhale. Mm -hmm. Do that again two more times. Maintaining that mudra. Open your eyes and focus on it. And then with a swift breath in and pull apart your hands. Then you can flick your hands. You could do a little bit of dry bathing. Awesome. We're grounded. So. We've grounded, we've circled our energy or circuited our energy. We've purified it. Um, we've done all these really cool things. So why the mudras? Mudras are specific in different traditions. Um, we see them a lot in Eastern traditions, right? Um, we see them a lot in martial, martial arts, meditative practices. Um, but mudras are an easy way for us to train our mind uh, to kind of access that magical thought, that magical, that magical being. So if you have not watched Schnoon Schnossesi, because I don't know, we'll get in trouble by saying the actual name. Oh, for I, mentioning I, the I, name I, of the show? I think you can say oh, the name okay. of the show. Dune Prophecy. Dune Prophecy. Uh, you'll notice that the Bene Gesserits will automatically, when they're going to read someone, they will do this with their hand, and it clicks them in to a trance-like state where they're very aware. So if you do this several times a day, preferably, but minimum one time a day for at least five to ten minutes, not only are you going to notice that your energy and your boundaries are better and you can handle that more and you can process energy better, when you're in a situation where you're overwhelmed by doing that mudra, it will help automatically, boom, put you back to where you need to be. And always remember, the tongue goes to the, bottom, the top of the mouth, right here, right behind those front teeth. Okay? So that's my little bit. I hope our listeners enjoy that. Roxy sure seems like she's energized now because mm -hmm. she just finished her dinner. Mm -hmm. They did not get turkey giblets tonight. Oh, okay. So now she's just rubbing her face on the couch. Anyway. So I will hand it on over to y'all and I'll chime in when you want me to. Okay. okay. All right. So who? You want to? Sure. Yeah, do, I, would I, it fit for if I? Oh, doesn't, doesn't matter. Cool. Anyway, Mike, go okay. first. Can you go second? All right. Okay. So for the week, I drew uh, the glyph uh, Fortuna Minor. Oh. 
Is that a bad thing? No. No. Oh, okay. So good. this is lesser fortune. Um, so here, let me hold it up one more time. Lesser fortune or fortuna minor. Okay. Not a bad thing at all. Um, the, uh, the counterpart to fortuna major, of course, which is really probably better for us. Uh, but fortuna minor is not a bad omen. Um, as far as like signs for the, the coming days, you know, it's, it's a good omen for, um, you know, like I think feeling a little more of a sense of prosperity, you know, and that's prosperity in every sense of the word, you know, so, um, you know, we could see that as subtle improvements to health. We could see that as, um, you know, a, a feeling a greater sense of security, which is nice because a lot of people I think in uh, recent weeks have been feeling very insecure for a number of good reasons um, or valid reasons, I guess I should say. Um, Fortuna Minor is also, though, an interesting sign because it, it reminds me a little bit of the story of the, uh, is it the, the grasshopper and the ant, I think. Um, where you've got this, you know, kind of this parable, right? I think it's like, it's almost kind of like an, like a fable, like Aesop's fables, where you've got the, the, um, you know, the, uh, the disciplined and the diligent ant who works all year to, you know, to harvest, uh, or to, to, you know, to gather food to store up for the winter, right? So that when, uh, you know, when the, the cold hits and the ground and the earth is covered with snow that, um, you know, that he can go into his, you know, his, his little, little, little home, right. And he will be secure and set for, for the winter. Right. And the grasshopper is just kind of just, you know, he's just kind of just living for today, has no plan for the future and just is just content, just kind of just, you know, just, just totally carefree and irresponsible. Right. Um, and that kind of captures the energy of Fortuna Minor. And I think also kind of a little bit of where we're at in the year, you know, um, People are very worried about money, right? Obviously, I think most of us worry about money a lot. Even when we have it, we tend to worry about it, I think. Um, but this card is an interesting one because while it is an omen or a sign for prosperity, it can also have a little bit of a darker edge in that it can tell us that prosperity doesn't always last. And so it can be a warning sometimes that we need to make the most of what we have. And that we need to uh, plan accordingly, that we need to not be frivolous with our, uh, basically frivolous with our benefits and our bonuses and frivolous with the abundance that we do have as we have it. Uh, because there, there could potentially be, or and most likely will be tight times ahead. Um, so, so we don't want to see that as an, as an ill omen necessarily, right? Because that's kind of the cycle or the nature of life, right? You know, we, we have prosperity, you know, and then maybe we see a period of austerity, right? Where we have to kind of tighten our belts again a little bit, right? But, uh, but this is, um, again, in general, a good card with just that tiny little warning, right? Over the next few weeks, I would say, um, you know, be careful, be careful with, um, you know, maybe where you, where you put your money, where you put your resources, have fun, right? We're in, you know, here in the U.S., you know, well, not just in the U.S., but, you know, a lot of people right now are, are you know, holiday shopping, right, is a big thing right now. And to see this card fall, to see this glyph um, fall, I would probably tell people like, you know, hey, you know, while you're out there buying all your loved ones, those, those perfect Christmas gifts or, who knows, Hanukkah gifts, Kwanzaa gifts, whatever holiday you may honor, right? Um, while you're out there doing all that shopping, um, you know, just, you know, kind of keep tabs on your spending, you know, um, don't overdo it, right? And and try to remember the, the real purpose behind the holidays that we celebrate this time of year. Right. Because that that's really that's the spirit of prosperity. Right. It's not not the capitalism. It's not the consumerism. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do not make yourself go into debt for Christmas. There's Unless no you're me, because Austin is a pricey, pricey bitch. He likes nice things. Um, I it, it you bringing that getting that glyph it brings to mind. Um, I, I don't remember if it was on the podcast or if it was something in a reading I was giving somebody, but I had like this image of like you could bring like you, you have like a family gathering at, at like Christmas time, you know. And it's like, maybe the plan was to get the family, you know, a, a PlayStation 5, you know, but then you can't find one. And so 
you know, what you could do is like get out your, your old, like, you know, PS one or, or like a N64 and like dress it up. Like, I don't know, like, I just, like, you could re gift that to your family and then have a gathered day where you like play old school games together. Okay. And it's like, Because you're, then you're still putting the energy towards, like, I want to eventually have this, like, very, um, like, joy-providing, dopamine-providing thing for my family, um, but I don't have that right now. So then what I can do is, is we can relive that moment so that we can keep that charge going so that we can come into luck Um, maybe, you know, in the next couple of months to, to get that, you know, Xbox or, or PS5. So it just reminds me of, of that little image that I had, and I can't remember No, if no, it was I here like, or not. I think that's actually really a sweet idea, you know, and again, and that kind of captures the essence of, of really kind of what Yeah. we should be focusing on It's like this people time just of together year. have some cookies, have milk, and like, get get in comfy Yeah. you know flannels and like watch shows and stuff with your family Yeah. Hmm. um so what's going on um astrologically right now um we have a pretty chaotic i don't know about um everyone else but um this particular mercury in retrograde <laughs> has definitely, I, I think we got spoiled a little bit on the, the last one in Virgo, um, because this one has definitely been more um, chaotic. Um, it's very uh, frazzling in, in my personal experience, but that could be because I'm a Virgo rising. Um, but... Mm -hmm. I've Uh, never had during a Mercury retrograde more electronic stuff go wrong. Yeah. This Mercury retrograde electronics have been insane. They've been It's going. very literal. bonkers yeah they've been going fucking bonkers Yeah, it's um it's a, it's a pretty crazy one and uh we're not we're not done with it yet. Um but there is a you know an auspicious point that I think we can take the Fortuna uh minor. and really capitalize on like a literal specific day, which would be December 5th. Um, Thursday, December 5th is when Mercury is going to be in conjunction with, or um, it's, it's when it goes in retrograde and then it goes, passes right back to the sun and conjoins, conjoins back up to the sun. Um, it's called a Kazemi. Um, and it's like a, a purified... aspect of the planet when it does that Kazemi so that conjunction is like extra special um and so thinking of the best possible traits of mercury flavored with uh, or flavored through um Sagittarius okay um and so what are some of the funnest things about Sagittarius um in my opinion I think it's like the idea of like vacations um travel Um, you know, just like having mind blowing, uh, new understandings of the world and like philosophy, right? Like those personal gnosis. So, um, depending on where Sagittarius hits in your, um, you know, section of your chart, uh, that can maybe tell you where to really extra pay attention to this mental clarity that you will get flavored through the aspects of Sagittarius, right? Um, now, specifically, something else is interesting happened, something, another thing that's interesting happening um, exact that day is, um, I think it was exact, hold on. I'll eventually have a, a computer one, but I just have my Astro Gold on my phone. So, Um, I'll be right back while you're looking for that. yeah, so, so it's a Pluto Venus conjunction. Um, and I apologize. It's not exactly that day, but December 5th, it's still in, um, in the realm of effect of the Pluto and Venus conjunction. And 
that's happening in Aquarius, right? Now, by December 5th, the moon is still going to be in Aquarius as well, which can lend to a tendency to over-intellectualize our emotions and maybe ignore our emotions. Well, on the other hand, Pluto is very aggressive and is like, no, we need to figure this out. Like, I'm going to turn this into a you know, boiling blister until you figure this out. Um, and then that joining up with Venus, though, is like a forced healing. Um, and so there's this forced healing of the heart and deep emotions, hidden things um, happening through the flavors of Aquarius. So I, I think this can be, um, I'd be interested to see what happens on the news um, that day. Um, if there's like, some kind of global event that maybe America takes to heart or that we just as individuals take closer to heart uh, than normal. Um, and that's still within the realm of influence with this Mercury um, conjunction. The Kazemi will be over by then, but they're they're playing off of each other. And I, I just, just looking at it, it's just kind of fascinating to me. Um, Uh, some other things I was just going to kind of wing, but um, we have, uh, I know, was it next Wednesday? Let's see, I gotta, what I'm, was I, it? as you're, you're going through these, I'm like looking at my calendar for the days ahead to see like, what do I have happening these days? Yeah, we, we can, but I, I, I definitely, I only had really the Kasimi mentally prepared for this section and um And then I, you know, just seeing the Pluto Venus conjunction coming up close, I figured that was interesting just because of some other realms of influence uh, other planets are doing. I think it's going to be uh, quite a theme. Um, Mercury goes back direct on the on the 15th. Wait, hold on. Um, my apologies. The, the 16th, um, it goes back direct. I think it's the 15th. I just have the hours weird. Um, yeah, it, it's on the, it's by on the 15th, Mercury goes back direct. And so with whatever this revelation is that we get in, uh, December 5th, and then this forced healing kind of theme that I'm seeing happen in the Aquarian parts of our chart, um, that is, uh, we're going to have more clarity on how to execute it, um, after the 15th happens. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, that's also the same exact day that Mars goes retrograde. And a lot of astrologers are, you know, have been gearing up and kind of preparing um, because Mars doesn't go retrograde uh, as, you know, it's it doesn't go as um, often retrograde like Mercury does. Um, and so the and plus Mars is, you know, it can be pretty violent now. It going retrograde, it's still within the realm of influence of being in opposition with Pluto. And this astrologers have been talking about um, since before the election, the election day was an exact um, opposition of Pluto and Mars, um, literally November 5th. And uh, Mars returns to the same degree that it was that day of the opposition on January 6th. of 2025 um so you know there's just little synchronicities it's uh you know ho however much you want to get into things I, I i was watching some you know i'm a i'm i'm a big fan of the recent you know the recent enlivening of of hip-hop um and the new life that uh you know kendrick has brought And so I've been following that a lot because, you know, hip hop wasn't, it wasn't like that for a long time, but I remember it when I was a kid and, um, you know, people were like, oh, there's all these Easter eggs, everything's connected. And there's, you know, a, a reviewer who was like, some people are like, this is, this is downright conspiratorial. Yes, you can say the universe is conspiring. Is it conspiring or is it just very woven? Are things just very like Kabbalistic? You know, if you study Kabbalah and like how everything really dances with everything else, um, is that conspiratorial 
is that just understanding and having respect and awe for the way that things can interlace. Um, so I don't remember where the hell I was going with that thought, but I can, with that, transition into um, the topic that was requested for us was to talk about trickster gods. Um, so in in perfect uh, harmony with uh, with Mercury, Mercury being a very trickstery, playful god um, and spirit, um, going retrograde in in a, a sign that's not super super happy in, um, we may be learning very uh, intense lessons, but in very silly ways. Um, and that's very trickster God. And I do think of Mercury as um, a great trickster God. Um, I associate the God Mercury with, um, you know, I just kind of group them all together from different pantheons. Um, but I love, of course, the God Thoth. Um, I believe that he's the God of tarot and uh, he's the God of writing and learning. And he was a mediator between all the other gods, right? So my... My trickster god I wanted to bring up, and I always forget his name, is... So Thoth has a baboon. Thoth's baboon is Astenu. Astenu? I'm probably saying that wrong. But, um... So I found out in looking up his name that Thoth himself was actually depicted as a baboon, as well as the ibis, and the ibis-headed um, uh, man. So there were times, though, where he was straight up, he was the baboon. Um, and he's this god of, like, mediation and, and learning and all this. And so people are like, why would he be associated with a baboon? They're, they're not indigenous to uh, to Egypt. They were imported in. Um, they're, uh, and they're always starting shit. You know, they're all they're little they're little fuckers. <laughs> They'll like eat all the crops and shit, you know. And so it's like, why would that be associated with such a a, a great god of of wisdom, you know? And you know that kind of goes into Hanuman. I didn't think about that, but anyways, um, the the baboon though, um, there was I couldn't find the exact talk that Lon Milo de Kent gave, but he explained. That if you think of the god Thoth sitting up on his on his throne, he's writing down these wisdoms, and then he hands it over to Astenu, and he's like, "Can you go give this to the humans?" And in his trickstery way, he translates the wisdom that Thoth gives in silly ways to humans, and so. Um, I was trying to think of the ways to verbalize this concept, but um, it's kind of like um, you have um, you have something super divine, you have something very large, and then you have human perception. And we can play this game of telephone with that divine uh, perception. And oftentimes it can lead us through uh, a roundabout way of still discovering those mysteries. My favorite example itself is honestly tarot, tarot evolving from a card game, a gambling game. And now today you study tarot, you could unlock secrets of the universe, you know? So it, it's a game, but it's like, you're still teaching yourself. So that's my favorite take on trickster gods. And uh, I have a lot of respect for them. And yeah, shout out to Mercury. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> no, I love that. Um, yeah. And that was uh, something I did not know about. Oh, that's very Yeah, cool. I, I All didn't, right. Okay. I didn't write down the exact way I wanted to say that, but. No, that's okay. No, you shared some really cool information though. And I love that. And that actually would kind of make sense given just kind of the vibe I've gotten from that particular God over the years. Like I could totally see like with all the wisdom and knowledge and stuff, it'd be like, Yeah, Like just you're fuck with them a like, little bit. yeah, I just yeah, yeah. I, I, I could, I could totally get that vibe from that one. I'm just gonna say the some of the wisest people I know have just a little bit of a funny bone, a little bit of a, a little prankster trickster spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm at you, Mike. Well, I think that's, I think that's, that's kind of 
that's why yes, they're that's tricksters, though, I think. But also, like, um, I think that's why they're tricksters, though, you know, and this question, th this this topic, I should say, actually was suggested by one of our, our saltines, one of our listeners. Um, and um, so, you know, and, and really in talking about this, what they really kind of wanted was they wanted us to kind of give them a, a little bit of additional information on just, I think, the, the, the concept, the, the phenomenon of trickster, go trickster gods as they exist in spiritual practice, um, you know, with, I think, uh, kind of a little bit of nod to cultural perspectives, um, you know, and a couple of other things, you know, there, there are so many, I mean, Mia, oh, yeah. Mia, Mia named a couple of, of brilliant ones, absolutely Mercury and, yeah. and, and by counterpart Hermes, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, there are myths to talk about shit that Hermes got up to, you know, um, you know, uh, and yeah, Mercury as well, um, you know, uh, Toth, um, you know, I mean, obviously within the Norse pagan community, Loki is the first one that really comes to mind. Yeah. But Loki is not the only one. Um, there were other gods that were within that pantheon that were also known for playing tricks. Um, I think that happens in a lot of different pantheons because a lot of those gods had a sense of humor. But there is something special about the archetype of a trickster mm -hmm. god when you look at, you know, again, gods like well like loki or uh coming out of like like atr traditions we've got gods like anansi oh, right yeah. spirits like anansi the, he's the spider um, the spider yeah. yeah um you've got um oh my god you've got gods associated with chaos like Ares, oh yeah yeah or or discordia you know you've got um in uh indigenous american traditions you know you of course have the the classic you know the cocopelli is that the right. coyote? Um, coyote, coyote is, is another one. Okay. Coyote. In some tribes, know. you've got you've got crow, crow spirit. Yeah, right. I mean, there are cultures all over the world that have this concept of a trickster god, of this this being that is um, otherworldly in in a sense that they exist to. Like their whole their whole thing is basically just to kind of take our perception of reality and kind of just completely flip yeah. it, you know. And I think it takes a, a spirit, an intelligence, a being, whatever you want to call them, a god, whatever you want to call them. It would take a spirit that would have to be supremely wise to be able to do that for us, to be able to take our perception of reality and to turn it on its head. Um, and, and to do that, not just to fuck with us, right? Because yeah, that's a big part of it because they want to have fun too, right? But, but also to do it to help us to grow and to learn because that's really ultimately the purpose of trickster gods in whichever pantheon, in whichever culture or era or part of the world they may originate. Yeah. Um, you know, we see that in the concept of like the sacred clown, you know, or the, or the fool, mm -hmm. an archetype of the fool yeah. in the tarot, not just the fool. There are, there are many. But yeah, like the like the foolish <clears throat> version of the fool, like the village, the, the wise village idiot, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know, Austin, did you, can you think of any others? I think every god or goddess has the ability to be a little bit of a trickster. Mm -hmm. And I say this um, because even in the work I have done and been doing with Hecate, she has a sense of humor. Yeah. And it all comes down to the people who I guess are working with these spirits as well. <clears throat> because I've had those interactions where Hecate has kind of done the, like, you know what? You're not listening. And I know you're trying, so I'm going to make it really obvious, but funny. Yeah. Uh, and she'll kind of, when it happens, you just kind of get this like, <laughs> you know, um, and I think that those spirits do that to their devotees to, 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 to match them because again spirits and deities evolve you know mm -hmm. um yeah never would i have been working with a deck of cards to hecate traditionally divination for that would you'd get high like you would probably overdose yourself on something 
or maybe even stones or possibly geomancy. But yeah, mm-hmm. like reading a deck of Oracle cards to communicate. So, so, but when it comes to the classic trickster gods, I, I like what their lessons have to tell us because these lessons will just continue to get more chaotic when not learned. So example, we have a very large Norse speaking community here in Utah. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people who say they work with Loki. If that's the case, Loki also liked pretty things and riches and living well. And these people just take chaos and go full bore into, I plan nothing. I manically spend all this money. And there's this part of me that looks at that and I'm like, it wasn't always this way. I bet in the beginning things were going pretty well. And then you got greedy. Mm -hmm. A lot of the trickster lessons also center around greed of humanity. Yeah. I think too, um, I don't know what you guys think about this, but I feel like there are like, there's like the, the classic like trickster gods and like the, the highest archetypes of those. And then as you know, if we look at like the the idea of Thoth's baboon going through the layers of reality to to give us the lesson, uh, do you think maybe through those layers and depending on the person, maybe the person is not actually connecting with with a like divine trickster god and mm-hmm. maybe instead a truly discordant spirit? Because I believe that there would be like discordant spirits that could be utilized by trickster gods and benefic gods. But if there's no one telling them what to do, then they're just left to their own devices. And, you know, they they just. Well, that and that and it's it's again, I can only attribute it to Hecate and things, but Hecate has a horde of spirits that surrounds her that she carries with her. That's always there. And so no matter what, something's going to come through. You might not get your typical visage of Hecate. You might get something different. So it would stand to logic and reason that maybe trickster gods would be like, you know what? You're not getting it. So we're just going to go ahead and let this thing handle it. Maybe you'll get it or you won't, but it's no longer my problem. You're looking bad. Um, because a lot of the trickster gods are also just a little arrogant, just a little tricky, just a little ego driven. Or are we arrogant though? Are we arrogant and we're not taking the lesson? And so they're like, you know what? You get it or you don't. Is that like, yeah, I think sometimes, yeah, I was going to say, I I think, yeah, okay. I can see that. Yeah. We, yeah. I think sometimes we ascribe arrogance to our deities and I think you probably shouldn't ascribe any human emotion to our deities. It's it's tricky that to me, I, 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 to me, I think that we, I think it would, it would stand to reason. And this is a generalization. Of course, I, I can't say that there are not deities out there that there, there are not deities and beings out there that that don't have an arrogant moment because the, we we certainly oh, yeah, have moments, right oh, God, absolutely you know right um i mean there okay. there are gods that like that's their whole thing is like avarice and yeah. pride you know and, and they, that's their whole thing right that's what they're known for but um but you also if you think about what we believe these spirits are the very fact that they are giving us their time and attention would prove that they can't be that arrogant True. Yep. They can't okay. be that full of conceit because if they were, we would never hear from yeah. them. We would never interact with them at all, right? Um, so I don't know. I think I think it's tricky sometimes that you know when we talk about arrogance and our gods, um, you know, I think sometimes they play with us absolutely, and I think that sometimes we we are 
just through our existence as humans, I think that we are a really fucking entertaining show for them. Yeah. Um, because we we do really horrendously stupid things. We're hilarious. Um, so one of the one of the questions again that I wanted to kind of really just just kind of make sure we answer on this uh this topic though was who they are from a cultural perspective. And again, and I think we've all kind of we've touched upon this a bit, but yeah. again, that kind of just to bottom line that or to summarize that. So would we all kind of agree that these are spirits that culturally exist um as fools as jesters as divine clowns as tricksters as chaos gods as you know as whatever whatever you want to call them right but they they exist in essence and at the same time they are these are very wise very wise beings very powerful beings right but they exist really in essence to again to kind of help us to see a different perspective to be able to to be able to embrace a different existence, to be able to understand things in a different way, yes. you know, to be able to walk a different path, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, yes, I well, I agree I with agree. that. I also think that some of the like some of the underlying lessons culturally cu culturally that we would see with trickster gods. I don't know if I have a filter on, but. I'm just going to say I look really nice. I'm like, wow. I, oh God, he's talking about the gods being arrogant. Listen to this. Jeez. I, I just keep like getting a, a, a look at my Richard's beard. He's shining like for his planet. Oh, right shit. Now. Okay. No. So that's what's and going on. And they're on Leo. Okay. That's what's going on. Okay. All right. What's that fine. mean? Okay. Tell me. It Need just me means you're pretty. You're saying you're beauty. You're so pretty. <laughs> you're so pretty. <laughs> anyway, but I, I, I honestly think and have always hold a firm belief and I, I guess gnosis on this, that trickster gods help remind us that it's not that serious. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, 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 we could see the baboon as a trickster God in, in the pan pantheon of, of Egypt. But when I worked with boss, boss was a little bit of a trickster she liked to play and she liked to have fun. Yeah. And if I got too serious in ritual, inevitably something would happen that to my mortal brain is like, oh, disastrous. And you could just kind of feel this like, <laughs> it's not that deep, <laughs> you know? Um, and so I, I've had those moments where sometimes they really are just trying to get get us as humanity or as a culture, as a tribe, whatever those gods are, to just lighten the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Like life is already hard enough. Life is already hard enough. You know, we also look back anthropologically and historically, trickster gods were always, you know, blamed for things like blights or they were blamed for things like, you know, crops not going well or, or floods or dry spells um and if we can look back on that what was that year prior like was there a lot of stress was there too much focus on on not actually enjoying life because we also believe that these beings created us it would also stand to reason that some of the things that we would be plugging into uh consciously or subconsciously would be that sense of divine, I guess, love of creation. You yeah. know, if you create, and you usually love it and you don't want to see it like falter. You don't want to see it get bad. You don't want to see it destroyed. Um, and it's not that you're obsessing over it as much as you still get to have a chance and go, ah, okay, you're doing good. You know? So I think that's kind of, one of their biggest lessons that they help us teach or help. I really love that though. And like to expand on that too, yeah, yeah. Keep um, is so I remember in, um, uh, I think it was one of Linda Goodman's books, um, in a astrology book, um, where she was talking about the humor of Capricorns that very dry. humor. Yeah. It's like a very dry humor, but it's always very like, well executed and it's not you have to you have to have experienced certain hardships to have to have it's like black humor 
like dark humor, like you, you'd have to have experienced something difficult to be able to understand why a certain thing would be funny or ironic um, in, in the realm of, of Capricorn's humor. And I bring that up because, um, you know, that that's a, a sign ruled by Saturn. And so um, Saturn, the idea of it having a sense of humor and you're talking about trickster gods bringing blights, well, like uh, COVID literally, um, the first case of it traced back to, what was it? like January 15th or something, 2020. Oh, yeah, it happened in a Capricorn season. And it was, Mm. it was, uh, like two, three, four, uh, five planet, uh, conjunction in Capricorn. Um, Damn you, Capricorn. and so it was Saturn though, Saturn, Pluto conjunctions throughout history have been associated with severe, um, uh, diseases like Spanish flu, I think happen on a Saturn Pluto conjunction. And so it's just interesting because we, we were starting to not take things seriously as a country. We ended up with, um, you know, some, some things. Um, and then it's like, and then it's like COVID was like, go home, you're drunk, you know, like, um, And then it also got me thinking about just randomly, I can't remember which part you're talking about, but it got me think realizing that you yourself being so mercurial influenced, like you are, you're a Gemini. And then I got to thinking about this, uh, this shit going on, this shit that's unfolding with, um, uh, with Drakeena and, uh, <laughs> um, Dr Drarin, what would be a Drake and Karen? Drarin, um, uh, Aubrey. Aubrey. Oh, let's just call him an Aubrey. Um, Aubrey and Kendrick. So Kendrick's a Gemini. Okay, and and uh, it's just when you were talking, I literally heard part of the song of Peekaboo on his new song. It's like, he's like, Bing bop, boom bop, bam. I'm um, this type of shit. I'm on you wouldn't understand. And people were like, is he just being a silly fucker? But it was actually a reference to an old vine. Um, it, and so it's just like the multi-layered humor, darkness, and like through strife, being able to execute certain levels of humor you would not have been able to appreciate if, if things were easy. So... Um, I, I guess that's it was kind of just stirring up some understandings of Gemini and Mercury and Saturn. Um, and then I just word vomited. So. No, no, you're good. You're good. Uh, uh, it's just it's it, it's very weird. Um, am I muted? Oh, no. Okay. No, you're not muted. You're 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 kind you're sitting back, though. So you're kind of quiet. Well, oh yeah, that's what I was going to uh, finish on is like getting to spend time with you like all the time and like growing Must up be with awful, two I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, then growing up with two Gemini brothers, it's like you get to see this this way of like you, you can't take life or, or like the best things happen when you don't take life as serious as a stick up your ass, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, the, I think like that's a lesson that trickster gods like can give us, you know, I, I don't know. No, no, I, I no. can see. No, 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 I, no, I agree with that actually, because I think, and that's, that's one of the, the main functions. Like you both have talked so much about like tr trickster gods teach us like, okay, hey, you can't take everything so seriously. All the yeah. Time. Right. And, and this is touching, this is kind of verging into the next part of this question. Okay, good. Like, because the next part of this question was like, why do they do what they do? Okay. Right. And so, so that's a big piece of it. Right. A big piece of it is like they, they function to kind of remind us, like, God, you know, like, like you're mortal and you only have so much time. Yeah. You know, and don't spend it fretting and worrying and stressing. And yeah, life is yeah. fucking hard. Yes. Right. But, but there are still moments of good in there, you know, and try yeah. to have fun as you can. Right. And so there's that piece. Yeah. Okay? But I don't think those are the times that people look at trickster gods and go, 
fucking trickster got shit. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like, it's not those moments when they're having fun with the gods. Yeah. It's those moments where something really crazy and yeah, also probably a little funny well, yeah. happens, right? But you're like, but you're still in a moment where you're like, God, I really wish this hadn't fucking happened. Yeah. You know, right? And so it's those moments, I think, you know, Austin, you mentioned like trickster gods were known for like, you know, blighting crops and things, right? I think that it is important for, you know, mortals to remember that these kinds of spirits have their own agendas and they operate outside of our understanding of time and and space and you know and 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 our perceptions of these kinds of things right and for a trickster god to do something like to blot a farmer's crops right i mean that could be just horribly destructive for the farmer right um but in the grand scheme of things, who's to say that by doing something like that, that, you know, which, you know, and who knows, depending on the God, right? The God could be like, oh, this is hilarious. Yeah. Oh, my God. I get to watch these people struggle and yeah. suffer through a harsh winter. Oh, my God. This is amazing for me. Right. And who knows? Right. You know, that could be that could be super funny for that God. Right. But that God could also be laughing because they're in on a bigger joke. Yes. They could also be, they could also be laughing because they know that that farmer has been struggling to get crops to grow on that land for years and that that last blight was the incentive that that farmer needed to say fuck this land, I'm moving, I'm going to go and I'm going to set up a new farm somewhere else. And the God, because they are not limited by our perceptions of time, they have already been able to see three, four, five years down the line where this farmer has successfully established a new farm somewhere else on a plot of land that is much more fertile. And they are growing successfully each year amazing crops, right? And that's the bigger joke. That's that's the big trick, right? You know, and that's, you know, and that's, I think, an important thing to keep in mind when we look at trickster gods, you know, they're, they're there to tell us like, hey, laugh, have fun, right? But sometimes they can do things where it's like, we, we can feel very much like, oh, shit, I'm the butt of the joke. Yeah. Yeah. You know? it, and I, I, I have to, it's like a, I have to choose to have the faith that they, that they do have like a, a larger view of the joke and because it 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 be feeling like like uh like we're we are the butts of the joke yeah it, it absolutely it can because we don't know we don't have their we don't have their the the, the width of their perception yeah. when it comes to really what's going on and what the future will be right for that situation well, well not only that but there's also just certain things where it's like the gods can look at a particular situation and go, you had the chance. You didn't do it. Sorry. And sometimes, especially if we're thinking culturally or um, societally um, or communally, we can see something like that. And th the message is, you had your chance. You fucked up again. Well, all right. Here's I what don't. You... I don't associate that with trickster gods. I associate that with war gods. <laughs> I associate that with tactician gods. Who who? It's all or nothing gods, yeah. and I don't see trickster gods as all or nothing gods like at all. Yeah. So I, I definitely I have mm -hmm. to disagree on that hard. Well, let, let me see if I can explain explain my, my myself better. You better. So no, I mean it's it's not like I'm mad or anything. I just no, no, I, I, get, I have no, a different. We, we, no, we can agree. we can disagree. We yeah. Totally can. Are we allowed to talk about politics? Yeah, I why mean, not? I do. It's our podcast. It's our podcast. Okay, yeah, cool. Awesome. At, at, at so we look at, at this. Point, so let's let's at, think about point, how tricksters, all teens who have been around for for even a minute. Have it's not true, they figured know. out 
but we're all political mm -hmm. and kind of where we stand on some of those issues, then uh, you've, you've not really been listening. Yeah. That's all I can really say. And and but, if the salt teams out there are red hats, you know what? Shout out to you. Maybe we'll uh, convert you to. <laughs> we're we're going to try. Some, something needs to convert you because you're, you're, you're part of it. You're part of a death cult. Damn. Okay. So let's take a look at. Okay. Trump was elected. First time. Mm -hmm. If we look at that on a spiritual level, we can say it was a fucking cosmic joke. Yes. Right? We can look at that and we're like, oh my God. Okay, so trickster gods and like we, we see the entire thing and if trickster gods had a play in this or trickster spirits, we're looking at it and we can go, okay, this is a fucking joke. Um, Trump is literally the representation of America's biggest fucking shadow. Or we're really just thinking about it, humanity's fucking biggest shadow. All right. Trump so, is a Gemini. I know. <laughs> June 16th, I do believe. Too He's close what? for comfort. I think his birthday is June 16th. I think so. Too close for comfort. I will be damned if he and I should. But no, Kendrick, Kendrick, though, Austin, he's Kendrick is June 6th, 17th. You're closer to Kendrick, okay? Um, and anyway. Tupac, Tupac was the 15th thing. So anyway, so we can see that. And, you know, we went through four years of absolute shit. And we were like, okay, things are getting better. Things are good. And then we had, you know, the blue wave. And we are like, okay, cool. Awesome. 14th. But the bullshit was still happening. That shadow was not healed or integrated. And the sh bullshit during the last four years was still happening. We still had fucking neo-Nazis out on the street trying to like, you know, we still had all that shit. And so if we look at this and we look at how a trickster God would kind of look at this, they'd go, obviously humanity didn't learn your fucking lesson. Huh. All right. Let's do another cosmic joke, but we're going to make you hurt this time. Yeah. So now we have mm -hmm. the red hats who are like, what? He's doing this. And it's like, yeah, he said he, he said. was. <laughs> He's doing what he said he would. And you voted for him. And yeah, so so you're not God, necessarily saying it's all or nothing. It's more exactly. like you didn't like here was the thing. You had an opportunity to see we're going to have to do another prank run. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's like, okay. I'll take that. I'll so, take like, that. You didn't get the joke the first time around, or it seemed like you got the joke the first time around, but some of you were still lagging. Like, some yeah. of you were, like, not enough of humanity has, like, healed and integrated that, but we have this group of people who did. So, like, unfortunately, they're going to have to suffer now because of you. But guess well, what? I mean, or we did, all gonna be us suffering did get a joke, but but there's there was a bigger, maybe it's an incremental joke that needs to be pulled on us so that we do see the 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 source of it. You know, True. the the Illuminati, so to speak, can truly be revealed um, through through this and and people realizing what the Illuminati that they're so scared of really is um is the heritage foundation it's white supremacy mm -hmm. that's that that's you know yep. people write oh it was in our face the whole time it was white supremacy yep yeah yep. the illuminati yeah it's uh it's the uh white supremacist religions yeah crystal it's, fascism it, yeah it's crystal fascism that's that's the illuminati yeah um yeah i'm just gonna say this a preacher a baptist a priest should never be able to afford a private jet several mansions they shouldn't be able to. Oh, those those prosperity gospel preachers are what? the worst. Oh, the in the, the those TV worst of the hypocrites. Like the, the Joel music. Austins, they are the worst hypocrites. Oh. They are they are absolutely false prophets. Absolutely, they know they, just, are. they and they, they do. They, they absolutely know. know they are. They know they are, and they they twist those sermons and they twist those people and they prosper off of that faith. And they clearly have not read their Bibles. Clearly. If they yeah. did, they, they would know absolutely that what they are doing and the lives that they are living 
they are those those men and i i'm not somebody who puts faith in this kind of theology or doctrine but those men those prosperity gospels or or, or, or preachers those those people they are full of sin well, absolutely the, the joke is the joke is is that they probably don't even have faith yeah they they, they, they just they chop it they chop and screw the bible to fit yeah. their their mm -hmm. benefit and so the, the the joke is is that they don't actually have faith and the joke is that the three of us all worship hecate mm -hmm. and various other gods and we're more christian than christians yeah. so that's a joke too <laughs> yeah. that, that also that also holds true the, the best christians i've met in my entire life the best christians I've met <laughs> have all been Witchcraft. some different variety of spirituality they have they've never actually identified mm -hmm. as christian buddhist muslim pagan hindu mm -hmm. some other variety of, of spirituality uh, or religion they, they have always been the best christian yeah jesus would be our friend he would yeah. be hanging out oh, with yeah. Joel Austin, oh yeah dude. oh yeah 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 um anyway well, i mean mike's his distant cousin you know there you go of joel austin of no jesus, jesus. Of oh yes i am a descendant of christ yes that's yeah mom told me that shit i don't yeah. know I don't know. Yeah, just call me Humperdoo. Um, <laughs> anyway. Humperdoo. Anyway. Um, okay, last bit of this one was um, how to work with chaos gods. Yeah. Because I think, you know, people always want to get practical, right? Until they until they, they actually get practical and they realize like, oh no, this is actually work. And then they don't want to be practical anymore. Um We've talked, we've touched upon a few points, right? I mean, obviously a big one is when you're dealing with chaos gods, remember that you're never going to be in control mm -hmm. in that situation. Like that's, that's not a thing. And you're probably never going to really, did I say chaos? I said chaos, trickster, you trickster gods. Chaos. Sorry. Okay. Trickster gods. Trickster forgive me. God. When you're never working with trickster gods, the, wolf over the eyes of a trickster god, you're never, you're never going to be in control and you're probably never really going to have the full story on anything that's going on because they're they're always going to need to be the one leading the game mm -hmm. um beyond that though and we we touched upon this all of us right you need to learn to have fun yeah if you are taking your spiritual practice so seriously if you are one of these people who is so caught up in your head and so worried about doing it wrong and offending your gods and offending your spirits and offending your, you know, and doing it wrong and doing it wrong. And, you know, and all these things, all these, these ridiculous things that people fret over, you know, if you are so caught up in that stuff to the point that you are losing the ability to have fun with your spiritual work and in working with a trickster God specifically, the, that trickster god's gonna be like you know what i'm out yeah when you can relax a little bit and actually enjoy this you know call me i'll be back for real okay uh but for now no thank you what about some other things do you think of any other practical advice don't try and bullshit a bullshitter mm -hmm. yeah that's just like, true like, Although I don't know, there's a part of me that also thinks though, like trickster gods would also have to have like a pretty wicked sense of humor. Yes, but there's. I, a, I think they respect when you, if you can, if you can bullshit, they they might respect it in some way or something. Yeah. Maybe that's I, why we do have people who are, uh, maybe not morally super like what we wouldn't consider very morally, uh, you know, together, but they make the material world work for them because maybe uh, some some aspect of the trickster spirits or the trickster gods or whatever, they're like, ah, well, he played the game, you know? Yeah. I don't know. That's fair. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think it would be kind of cool to see in, in embracing the idea of, of the trickster to bring an element of play into your ritual. Right. Again, kind of kind of carrying on more with that theme of having fun, you know, um, and I'm a chaos magician, you know, and so in thinking about this topic a little bit earlier, cast today, I was thinking like, like what silly. I said, you've cast spells with silly putty. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've used I've used silly putty as a spell component, um, but I'm also thinking like sitting down and beginning a spell with like a knock knock joke. I mean, that's that's really ridiculous, but I'm like, <laughs> why the hell not? You know, um, you know, like, I mean, 
God, you know, like you could using a using the ace of wands as your wand. <laughs> there you go. Right. I mean, like, like having fun and, and obviously, of course, in doing deity work, doing some research into the deity. You know, if you are dealing with uh, a, a deity, again, just like going back to say, you know, the Nords, you know, going back to say like Loki as an example. Right. Do some research into the stories around that god. You're a man, do your ritual and drag. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, D do your ritual With and bad drag. con. Right? Hmm? Do your do your ritual and drag, but make it campy as fuck. Oh, okay, yeah. But it has to be extreme. It has to be campy as fuck. Yeah. Or it has to be polished and precise. There's Yeah. no in between. Yeah, let let your rituals let them be more like parties instead of like really somber, serious kinds of events, right? Um, but again, like as I was saying, do some research into those spirits. You know, like learn what what maybe would what people believe would have been say like a traditional offering. Yeah. You know, um, you know, and and incorporate those elements as well. You know, the thing is, is you don't really need to, or you 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 don't need to approach working with a trickster god any differently than you would really need to approach working with any other kind of god. Um, you know, just kind of with the understanding of of this is kind of the personality that you you now kind of believe you're working with, right? Like this is a god that is not as inclined to take everything as seriously, um, and and therefore you you probably shouldn't either. You know, that's actually one of the most effective ways to work with any god is to do what you can in yourself to emulate the god. Um, you know, and, and again, that would be true for any god. Um, yeah, I don't know. You guys think of anything else? I don't know. I, I think it, I agree with what you said too. Like the foundation is how do you work with any God and then translating that to a trickster God, having a more playful approach and being, a, a, allowing yourself room for play instead of like you brought up of worrying, like you're offending your spirits and, you know, bringing that religious trauma and reminding yourself, okay, this, this isn't meant to be that serious, but if you still have your your heart aligned with what you want what your will is and what your your destiny is what you're shaping your own destiny to be um that's that's the core uh i i believe yeah i would agree yeah yeah all right and uh all all uh if we're wrapping up i mm -hmm. pulled randomly a tarot card To, and and just to see if anything, but it's funny we got the Knight of Wands, um, because he does things playfully. You know, he's he's showing off. He's like, I'm going through this race. He, imagine the four uh, knights in a race with each other, and you know, the Knight of Wands is the one that is is styling on everybody. You know, he's he's doing everything with flair. He's uh. And he's moving fast through it. And so I I think this can be a message of just getting through this Mercury retrograde with, a, you know, a new strategy, maybe on the other side of this, um, so that we can prepare for, you know, the next phase of the evolutionary journey of the court cards. Um, but yeah, um, that's a vibe. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm feeling Knight of Wands. I feel like I am. I, I feel like I am bringing that energy. I think you have that. Yeah. Cause, well, you have a stellium in Leo, in your Gemini. So yeah, you're definitely. What that means, but thank you. You have a stellium. Well, you just have yeah. like a shit ton of planets in Leo. You have a stellium. You should see a doctor. <laughs> yeah, you um, should get that. You should get that checked. Um, that's a big stellium. Um, <laughs> I've never seen one. So... Never. I've never seen one so big. My God. Um but you could you could use that to flirt. You'd be like, hey. So you, know, you have a stellium. I've got a big stellium. My um, stellium's in Leo. Exactly. Mine's not. Okay. Mine's in Capricorn. Um I, I, you could put, put a person on like, I need a man with a big stellium. Big stellium. A stallion uh, with the stellium. Okay, Jennifer Coolidge. Good job.
I want to oh, hide. Oh, bad. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, how to do that. bad. Damn, Mia. Good. Yeah, good job. That, that was, was pretty right. good. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was, that was a good. That was a good Jennifer Coolidge. Um, okay, Much better. Let's wrap it up. Before we do, because we haven't done this in a minute, I would like the two of you to share with our saltines your social media links on where they can connect with you to get readings and other services. All right. Go yeah. ahead, Mia. So uh, you can hit me up on Instagram. I'm I'm still like on Instagram. I'm just taking a, a break on that. Um, and then I talk a lot of shit on threads. Mia Otero um, is the little handle at Mia Otero. Blue Sky, I have a Blue Sky. I haven't used it a lot yet, but I have a feeling that it's probably going to be the final one. So I got Tero Miso at that one. Um, otherwise you can visit, uh, catandcauldron.com if you book, uh, any readings that you book on a Sunday or a Monday, you're automatically going to get me. Um, so hit me up Instagram slash threads, Mia Otero at Tarot Me. So those are my two handles anywhere. Um, and I'm just going to say this, one of our regular saltines and guests, had a reading with the fabulous Mia and you're, you're getting you, very, you're getting very quiet again. You have shook them. You have shook them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, you blew a They're hole. They're still talking you about blew a hole in their reality. Yes. Well, I'm glad. Um, so my socials are at Austin underscore the underscore witch. Uh, that is my Instagram, that is my threads, and that is my TikTok. My TikTok is where I am most active, um, mainly because, like, Mike did this thing that he always does. So he got a threads account, and now, like, even though I was on there longer than him, he's, like, surpassed me by over a thousand followers. I was... The the shop page was it's on, the shop page. The shop though. page was on threads longer than you were. Was it? Yeah. Well, and it's a shop page. And it's, it's not yeah, and it's, and it's not my page. It's the shop page. It's Mike's page. It's fine. Um well, I mean, I'm the one that posts all the content, but it is the shop page. Anyway, so um I'm yeah. not really active on threads, mainly because um mainly because I, I, I don't think I get threads, which is so weird. Like everyone's like, it's supposed to be like Twitter. And I'm like, I never got Twitter. You just that? put your intrusive thoughts in there to the void. But That's if all. I do that, then people get angry. And so I just don't. Mm -hmm. Um, but then my TikTok, I'm more active. And it's not that I'm really active. It's not like I'm posting videos every day, but that's where I'll post like tips. That's where I'll post like readings. I do a lot of lives or not a lot, but I've been doing more lives. I've been probably averaging about a live a week on TikTok at this point. Um, that's where anything to do with the Temple of Agathe of Potropea is going to go. Um, uh, and, you know, you can find me all over Cat and Cauldron. I may not be the one posting all the content, but I'm there. I exist. I float. I am I am Mercury and Leo and a little bit of Gemini, but mainly, mainly, mainly Mercury and Leo. We love it. We we're all the better what? for it. Um I, yeah, about, follow me on yes. TikTok too, motherfuckers, because uh if I get uh I I have a hard time with TikTok, but I can't do the lives unless I have people. So I'm in a I'm in a catch twenty two situation where it's like I have to make videos to get the followers. I don't really want to make the videos. I'd rather just do the live. So I don't know. I'll figure it out on the other side of this goddamn retrograde. I think what you should do is you should do monthly sun, moon, and rising readings. With yeah. Tarot. Yeah, that'd be fun. And then you could <laughs> like, have like everybody that. does those. Well, yes, but people like those, and you're the best, so, meh. <laughs> well, I'll try to think of a way that I can provide something different. You just gotta bring your, you just gotta bring your, your, your gangsta to it. I'll bring it. You'll just be like, so listen up, I'll use, uh, I'll use, listen up, I'll use Aries, Sun, Moons, and Risings. <laughs> 
here's what the cards have to say for you. I'll even like teach you how to do an accent. It'll be great. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay, we got this. What is happening? I don't oh, know. God. We did a high five and then it was, I was just playing. Okay. Her At least hand. I didn't do it with my feet. Okay. Are we good? Her, her, her. Yeah, I think we're good. Her. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. That's not, that's not the right one. How I, does it? I, I, I oh, ruined there. No, it's not doing it. It's not doing it. It was supposed it. to do like little reaction emoji it things. It did before where it would do a little, little heart. heart thing. Yeah. It's not. It's fine. Oh, uh, I broke Zoom. Oh God. Okay. Now right. we're totally de we're we're totally deteriorating in in the crust yeah, of we, a yeah, we, Mercury retrograde. Yeah, we're we're channeling our our inner trickster gods. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wrap it before we get any more ridiculous. All right, everybody. Oh, awesome! Did it? Oh, rockets! Yay! Did those rockets fly into your button. huge stellium? <laughs> okay. All right. Um. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'll be back on Friday with an episode of Esoterica to answer some questions that we received. Please send us your questions. Yes. Okay. Um, you can email us. You can comment on the, the episodes that we post, our regular podcast episodes. Okay. Um, we may have some other fun little, like, videos coming out in the next little while, kind of like Esoterica. Okay. Um, we're, we're, we're floating some cool ideas around. Okay. We we, we do everything for you because we, we love you. Yes. 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 Praise us. Praise us. Okay. I love this. This is, I learned instead of this heart, I learned this. Oh. They're little baby hearts. Oh, okay. Well, that probably would work better if I didn't have these nails. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Salting means.